want to talk about magic bullets. You see, I'm a doctor, and my passion is to take care of kids like these who are born with these life-altering and devastating malformations. Now, we can't just cut these out. Well, we could, but it would make something of a mess. Um, the problem and the solution actually lie at a microscopic level. Life would not be possible without millions of little microscopic components working together to create us like an ecosystem. What's wrong with these kids is that one or two of those components have gone haywire and grown out of control. So what they need is a magic bullet, something that affects its target without affecting the rest of that ecosystem. This goes back over 100 years ago to Dr. Paul Ehrlich, who was here in Boston, by the way. He not only coined the word magic bullet, he was the first to describe chemotherapy, antibodies, and in, in fact, the first antibiotic. Now, those are examples of magic bullets at the molecular level that eventually led to modern drugs. However, a pill is not going to help those kids that I just showed you. Their problem is at a slightly higher level than molecules. They have derangements of little, little microscopic components of the tissue. So together with my friend John Parrish some years ago, we asked the question, can energy act as a magic bullet? And the answer was yes. In particular, we're interested in light energy. Now, most of you could look at these two cars parked on a hot summer day in Boston in the sunlight and tell me which one is going to get hotter. Right, the black car. Why? Because it absorbs more sunlight energy. And we reasoned that the same principle might be used inside the body. If you send in an intense flash of light, the objects that absorb just a little bit more light could get hotter and perhaps be targeted. This was quite successful. And one of the things you're probably familiar with, with the, from, that was invented in my lab, which is the Wellman Center for Photomedicine at uh, Mass General Hospital here, is laser hair removal. This works by a pulse of light that's absorbed by the brown or black pigment mel melanin that's inside your hair follicles. And the heat that's created in the hair shaft actually diffuses out to the target. The real target are these stem cells, without which the hair follicle cannot renew itself. This is now the most popular use of a laser in biomedicine, and it's very useful for people. This woman, for example, has a, a disorder called hirsutism, a hormonal abnormality, where she has more hair on her chest than I do on mine there on the left. Um, and after just two treatments, she's permanently uh, free of that problem. What really got me going on this, however, was this problem. This child has a common birthmark called a port wine stain, and what's wrong here is a massive excess of little uh, blood vessels throughout the skin. To, to solve this problem, we had to turn to a different type of laser technology called pulsed dye laser. Uh, that, by the way, led to two Massachusetts companies that are still doing quite well. And um, the same principle uh, applies here. We are able to destroy at the microscopic level just those little abnormal blood vessels. At age two, year, two years, this is uh, her after a series of six treatments, and uh, with no further treatment at age six years, you can still see she's much better. Now, she's not perfect, and we still have lots of problems to solve here that we're still working on. You can see she has a residual birthmark, but she's much better off with that. Now, this guy, he clearly doesn't like my talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> This little Asian boy <clears throat> was born with something called nevus of Ota. And here the problem is similar, but it's at the single cell level. His skin and, in fact, his eyes are peppered with little pigment-producing cells called melanocytes. And in order to go after them, we had to come up with different technology called Q-switch lasers. These are very bright, a billion watts of light power packed into a few billionths of a second uh, to to uh, destroy just those cells. This is my favorite thing to treat because the outcome is usually perfect skin, just like he has here. And, but you can see his eye is still involved. He's got that blue eye on, on his left. Uh, and that's because this laser is a bit too dangerous to use in the eye. Well, when the target is so small as a single cell like that, interesting things happen. We have to pack in so much light in such a short period of time that you get explosions. This is an unusual picture. It's a highly magnified picture taken in one millionth of a second of what's going on inside those pigment cells in his skin. And what you see here 
is the violent boiling of the cells. So it's more of an explosion. Same thing sort of happens in your teapot, but very fast here. What's interesting is that it's so well contained that the adjacent cells survive, and so you get these excellent results. Well, we began to ask the question then, how small can this go? Can we go all the way down to the nanotechnology size of nanometers, much, much smaller than a cell? Well, the interesting ex what I think is the most interesting example of this goes back uh, 6,000 years. This is Utsi. He's the oldest uh, mummy ever found. Uh, he's a European gentleman who uh, spent much, much of those 6,000 years uh, frozen in a pond up in the Alps, and he was kind of released, I guess, by global warming. Utsi <laughs> has 39 tattoos. And they're made of charcoal, which is, in fact, a very primitive form of nanotechnology. Those particles are much, much smaller than a cell. If you fast forward 6,000 years, you may recognize this gentleman who has a tattoo of Utsi on his arm, uh, some kind of psychic, if not cutaneous, connection there over many millennia. Um, and if Mr. Pitt ever wants that off, we will use this kind of technology to do it. I have nothing against tattoos, by the way. I think they're wonderful. And the reason I think they're wonderful is they have been the precursor to some new technology. It turns out, if you take absolutely pure gold and make a little nano rod out of it, it becomes an antenna that absorbs an insane amount of light. And when you pump this with the lasers, it's possible to use it to target cells as long as you can get that little thing to go to the right place. So you, if you coat these nano rods with molecules that <clears throat> recognize and bind to cancer, uh, and this is an example in a mouse. This is work from uh, not my lab, but from Sangeeta Bhatia's lab at MIT. The little nano rods will stick to the cancer. You can then pump them with a laser, and you see on the far right uh, an image of sort of a thermal map, it's possible to heat and selectively destroy just the cancer cells. That's not ready for human use yet. If we were mice, we would all have no cancer by now. Um, but it's on the way, and it's very fascinating. Well, recently, in my lab, we asked the question, what about the opposite? I've been talking about light causing heat as a magic bullet. What would happen if we take energy away from the body? And is it possible that cold can ever act as a magic bullet. Well, if you take care of kids like I do, you run into strange things. And there's a rare, fortunately rare occurrence. Newborns and young children, when given a frozen treat, if they suck on it long enough, their fat little cheeks get very cold, and they develop inflammation in their, in their cheek. And what's interesting is that only the fat gets inflamed and then dies, and it's harmlessly uh, absorbed by the body. And you end up with a kid, not like this one, with nice fat cheeks, but a skinny-cheeked child. This actually goes by the medical diagnostic term of popsicle paniculitis. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so we ask, what's going on here? And could this possibly be used uh, in medicine? Well, what's going on is shown here. These are a microscopic picture of living fat cells brought down to the temperature of your refrigerator. And inside those cells, the molecules of lipid, fat molecules, crystallize, and they form lipid ice, which is very stressful to the cell. It goes ahead and dies, and then is naturally resorbed by the body. That's what goes on in the kid's cheeks. It's also what goes on with a stick of butter. You put it, butter in the refrigerator, it gets hard. You put it out at room temperature, and you soft and you can spread it around. Well, we thought we would do something interesting with this. So we made a, a device that rolls up, picks up a roll of your fat from your belly and starts cooling it from both sides. And you leave that on there for about an hour uh, at refrigerator type temperatures, actually a little lower, and you get the stick of butter phenomena. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and this was recently approved by the FDA. It's available for those of you who, you know, ate a little too much for lunch. Um, <laughs> That's interesting. It's very interesting that we can use something as simple as cold as a magic bullet for cells that are rich in lipids and fats. We'll see where this goes next. <laughs> Look, I want to get back to kids in the last few minutes here. There are lots of children in this world who need such help. And uh, recently, together with my friends, 
uh, Tanya Tran and, and others, we opened a clinic in Vietnam. Vietnam is a country where the average income is less than $3 a day. And they simply can't, cannot afford to provide uh, for children this, this kind of technology we've been talking about. So we raised a bunch of money. We got uh, about half a million dollars worth of donated lasers, opened a clinic in the center of uh, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, trained the local physicians there, and uh, made it sustainable. And I'm, I'm proud to say there are thousands of children now uh, who have access to this technology in Southeast Asia. Uh, I learned many things, met many friends, but along the way, I saw some things I never had heard about. This little child, uh, <clears throat> you can see there's something wrong with her left arm. And uh, in Southeast Asia, as a sort of act of desperation, they actually paint their children with radioactive phosphorus. Uh, I've never heard of this before. This is not a magic bullet. This is a tragedy. Uh, <clears throat> Her arm is scarred. She, she will not be able to use that hand very well. And ultimately, she will develop cancers there. And we see hundreds of these kids, which means there are thousands of them. So this is my latest passion, is to somehow help kids uh, with this condition there. And we have a bunch of strategies to do so. Um, again, at the microscopic level using magic bullets. If you're interested in this, uh, there's a website there, vietnamvac.org, that describes what we're doing. Uh, they also use a lot of open fires and, and cooking, and one of the problems there, we see these horrendous burn scars. Um, I don't have time to talk about it. With some different strategies, we've, we've started to not only repair wounds using light, but stimulate the normalization of the tissue. So I'm, this is my last slide. My suggestion to you is go ahead, be a magic bullet. Do something highly selective and helpful. For example, help a kid. Thanks. <laughs>